Okay, we're going to move on to our measures of variability. So the range is when we take the, let me get my mouse here, big, and we subtract the littlest amount, okay? So it's telling us overall how much data is, how the data is spread out. So bigger number is going to be a bigger spread, smaller numbers, smaller spread. So to do the IQR, we take the upper quartile and we subtract the lower quartile. Oops. Okay. All right. When we make a box plot, we first put the numbers in order and then we find the median. So I'm just going to kind of draw, right? So this is the median. Then I mark Q1. So then I mark Q3. So those all go make my boxes. And then I draw my whiskers to the smallest point and the biggest. So this is the minimum. This is the max. Okay, to find our mean average deviation. So we've got three steps that it takes to do the math. So one, find the mean. Two, remember we find the distances to the mean. And then three, we find the mean of the distances. So three steps, find the average. Tell me how far away they are from the average. Then I find the average of the distances. So that is mad right there, mean absolute deviation. To find Q1 is, let me gonna type here. So to find Q1, first we have to find the median. Then we find the middle of the first half. Kind of overlap there, that's okay. And then to find Q3, or the upper quartile, we start with the median still, and then we find the middle of the upper, or the second half of the data. So then we just split our data into four equal sections, and then we can see where are the numbers concentrated in this box plot. So that helps us draw this box plot, we can see, right, this is closer together. So we've got more numbers packed in that area where when they're more spread out here, we don't have as much data in that. It takes up a bigger amount of space. It's more spread out, not as consistent. So this tells us that eight chickens on a farm are weighed. Their weights are listed here. So we need to find the mean and the mean absolute deviations of these weights. So three steps, find the mean, find the distances, find the mean of the distances. So let's start here and add these up. So go ahead and add those up, line up their decimals, and come back when you are ready to check. So I'm just finishing listing these here, 5.9, 6.2, and 5.7. All right. So, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, I can see 10 here, and 10 here is 20. 8 and 2 makes 30, 37, 38. So I always like to look for those compatible numbers. I just kind of mark off that I actually use them to make sure I have everything. All right, so here I can see, I'm going to switch colors here. 5 and 5 is 10, 20, 15, 20, and 26, 32. Six more is 38, and 10 makes 48, bring down that decimal. So the total amount of the chicken eggs is 48.8, and then we're dividing by how many eggs we had. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 48 goes into, divided by eight is six, and eight goes into eight one time. So the average amount of a chicken egg for these eight chickens was 6.1 pounds. So now I'm going to make a list of how far away these are. So to get from 5.8 to 6.1 is 0.3. So I'm just gonna list them out so I can add them up. This is zero, 
just going to put that in there. So I remember I still have that as a distance. So 0.5 all the way up to 0.61 is 0.6. 6.5 to 6.1 is 0 0.4. 7.1 to 6 is a whole pound different. 5.9 to 6.1 is 2 tenths. 6.2 to 0.1 is one tenth different, and 5.7 up to 6.1 is 0.4. So now we are finding the average of these distances. So you really want to make that list because you've got to just you've got to know those distances and keep track of them. So it's just easiest to write them down as you go. So here is 10. 13, 14, 15, 16, plus 4 is 20. My decimal comes straight down. 2 plus 1 is 3. So this mean absolute deviation. Oh, I did not divide. I was like, 3? That can't be right. Like, they're all pretty close to each other. They're not even 3 pounds apart. So I've got to take that is what they all, all the differences weighed together and divide by eight again here. So can't go into three, but it can go into 33 times, which is 24. And bring down that. Eight goes into 67 times is 56. And bring down a four. Eight goes into 45 times. So our, so our average was 6.1. So most of the eggs weighed 6.1. Not most of them. The average of the eggs weighed 6.1 pounds, right? If we redistributed them and made them all the same, they'd be 6.1. The deviation then is 3.375. So that's like 37 cents. That's really not a lot of money and it's not a lot of deviation. That's a really small amount that these eggs are deviating so they're all pretty consistent that these oh i keep calling these eggs see i was counting then i was like what kind of chicken is laying a like a gigantic seven pound egg these are not eggs these are literally just chickens i'm so sorry probably wondering what i was talking about so these eight chickens are pretty consistent that they weigh about six pounds right there's like this one that's a little bit more and maybe one that's a little or one that's a little bit less but overall they're about six pounds because this is a really small number it's less than one it's less than a half so it's a very close and consistent right they're all their chickens are getting the same amount of food and really thriving there's no one chicken that's really dominating and taking those resources from another one sorry i was really like gosh these are really giant eggs i was like maybe they like weighed all the eggs that that chicken laid together or something. So that makes more sense. Those chickens would weigh on average 6.1 with a mad deviation of 0.375, which is very small. So the chickens are very consistent around six pounds. Okay, so let's look at this histogram and decide which best describes our data here. So we can see our weekly hours of practice anywhere from one up to 20 hours of practice for those violin students. Okay, so a peak at 13 to 16. So that is not the highest point, so no. There's an outlier from zero at zero and 10. Um, I don't really, yeah, I don't think that's an outlier. They pretty consistently, right? There's students that practiced at every interval there. There is a cluster from 13 to 20. So yeah, there is, but there's also not really a gap here. So I wouldn't, I would say the cluster is the entire thing. So there's not a cluster there particularly. And the data is approximately or close to symmetric, right? If I cut this in half, right? This goes up, this goes down. It's pretty close to symmetric. So it is almost symmetric. All right, looking at this dot plot, suppose one more data point is added to the plot at 19. So let's go ahead and add that there. Which statement best describes how this would change the measures of center? 
So I think we need to find them first and kind of look and see. So we had 15, 15, 16, 17, 17. Oh, these are the same ones that we used before, I believe, right? We found these earlier. So let's go back and pull that data where this problem here, right? We already found that the mean was, so it is this 174 into 10. So this goes in here one time, which is 10, seven left over, 74, seven. Then we've got four left over and four. So our mean was 17.4. Whoops, 17.4. So let me just copy this and come back to our problem here. So we already did this, so we don't need to do it again. Okay, so we know this is what it was to start. Okay, so now we're adding in another number 19 right here. So we need to see how are the measures of center going to change. So did the mode change? No, the most occurring number is still 18. So that stayed the same. My median, let's see. So I added a number here. It could shift it a little bit bigger depending on how the numbers fall. So we had 15 to 20, 15 to 20, 16 to 19, 17, 18, 17, 18. So it did shift it up just a tiny bit. And so we had 174 and we're adding on 19 and we've got 13, 7, 8, 9. So now we've got 193 and we're dividing by 11. So let's see how that changes here. So 11 goes into 19. My mind went blank. That is one, one time. So we have eight left over goes into 83 seven times. So we're still about 17. So I might just bump it up a tiny bit more. So maybe it would be about 7.5 now. So goes in there 77. So we've got six left over. So I'm gonna add this decimal. Goes into 65 times, which is 55. And it's just gonna keep going for a little while. So it's about 17.5. So it it really didn't change the, me, the mean that much. It barely shifted the median because it's a number that's pretty close in here. If we would have added a point at like 40, that really would have shifted everything bigger, except for the mode would have stayed the same. But those other numbers would have shifted over because it had to incorporate that number far over but where this is right kind of in the middle of them, it didn't really change things. So the median is the only measure that would change. So eh, it changed a little, the mean changed a little. So I'm not gonna just cross that one off, it's okay. The measures of center would be unchanged. Well, no, they changed a little bit. The only measure of center that would change is the mean. Well, that wasn't true. And the median wasn't the only one, so the mean and the median both increased. So they didn't increase a ton, but they did increase a little bit. So as we're doing these, we kind of need to know what, was, what were the data points to begin with? What did they change to? If I'm adding numbers that are bigger, it's probably going to shift them up. If I'm adding numbers that are smaller, it could shift it down. And the median is just going to kind of depend, right? If our median would have been an 18 to start, if we had one fewer 17, then it probably wouldn't have shifted because we have so many 18s. But So you just kind of have to do some work. You can do it. What was it to start? What was it to end? Okay, eight stores at the mall sell the same style of pants for these different prices. What is the median? So we want to go ahead and put those in order. And so we've got, so go ahead and do that. So 32, 
35, 36, 37, 38, and then we've got 40, I'm going to be in the way here, and then we've got 42 and 44. So if they have my size in stock, I'm definitely going to want to go to this cheapest store here because they're the same exact pants. So find our median is finding that middle number, and we've got two in the middle here. So the middle of that is $37.50. So the pants are around $37.50 at any given store. So now we're going to find the lower quartile. So since we had two of these here, we've got to split them and give the 37 to the lower quartile and 38 to the upper quartile. So now finding the lower quartile, we've got the middle here is $35.50. And then the upper quartile, we've got these here, the middle of those are $41. So if I was drawing that box plot, I'd have $37.50, $35.50, $41. Draw those out. It goes down to $32, goes up to $44. So I can see the most, right, they're pretty commonly around $36. And then there it kind of goes up a little bit. So not as many of the pants are as expensive. Most of them are around that $36 mark. Hey, okay, we've got this dot plot here. So we need to find the mean. So we're adding these up. So here is two and six. So I got six because this dot is worth three and this dot is worth three. So then four, eight, 12. And then we've got five, 10, 15, 20. I should really be writing these up and down. That's going to be a lot easier. And 20, 6, 12, 18, 7, 14, and 8. So adding these up, we've got 2 and 4 plus 6 is 10. 6 and or 8 and 8 is 16. So 26 plus 4 is 30. We've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now we've got to divide by all of the dots, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 dots. So 16, 32, 48, let's see, 16 more plus 48 is 50, no, 64. I was like, that's not enough. 64, and then what am I adding on? 16 makes, oh, 80, perfect. It goes in there exactly five times. So my mean is five. So now I'm going to list out the distances. So to get from two to five is three. To get from three to five is two, but I have two of those, right? Each dot is two away. To get from four is one, one, one. And then all of these are zero because there are the mean. The sixes are all one away. The sevens are two away, right? Because my average is five. And then eight is three away. So now I'm going to add these up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 17, plus three is 20 divided by 16 dots still. So we're still, even though these are zero away, they're still part of the data set. So 20 divided by 16. So this goes in here one time. And we've got four left over. 16 goes into 40. Two times, 16 times two is 32. Then we've got eight left over, bring down a zero. And we know that 16 goes into 85 times. So our mean absolute deviation is 1.25. So our next thing wants to know which of these measures fall within that mean absolute deviation. So we add them up. So we add the mean and the mad and we subtract the mean and the mad. So five plus 
1.25 is 6.25. So anything smaller than 6.25 is within that normal range. And then subtracting this is 3.75. So anything between these. So three is too small. So these fours fit inside of the normal. All the fives do and all the sixes and then the sevens are too big. So the data points of four, five, and six fit within that normal range. Okay, and then the last thing it wants us to do is find our median. So this dot here matches to this one. I'm actually going to erase some of this work here so I can actually see my dots here. So this two matches to the eight, three matches to seven, three matches to seven. All oh, these are perfectly symmetrical. So these match, these match, these match. So I'm going to be left with five in the middle. So the mean is five, the median is five. This data is perfectly symmetrical. And the average deviation was 1.25. So right, they're all spread out pretty evenly here, not too far away. So 1.25 is not a huge number, not as close as that chicken one where they were all very consistent, but still not too terrible here. Okay, we're gonna use this box plot to describe the distribution. So we're selecting all of the correct answers. So remember this is right, 25%, 50, 75, 100. Each of these are representing a quarter of the data. The closer together that section is, the more consistent it is. There's more of those types of numbers. So of the people surveyed, half own seven to 13 pairs. So seven to 13, right? Here's half of the data because here's two sections out of four. So that sounds pretty good. Of the people surveyed, a quarter own three to 10. So, I mean, so three to 10, so three is here, 10 is here. So I can see here's one section, this is two sections. So this is really two fourths of the data people own three to 10 pairs. Of the people surveyed, one half own 13 to 18. So 13 is here, 18 is here. This is only one section out of four. Of the people surveyed, one fourth own three to seven. So three to seven is one section out of four. So we're just seeing how many sections is that range. And of the people surveyed, three fourths own 10 to 18. So 10 all the way to 18 is one, two sections out of four. So go ahead and choose the ones that have the matching correct sections to that range there. Hey, what is the median? Sorry, our middle here. The interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. And our range is big minus little. So usually that interquartile range is going to be a better indicator of your actual data because these are less common, right? So most people own more than this. They don't own this many. Most people own about this many. It's kind of showing that middle piece here. So the IQR is kind of a more consistent piece of data for us. And that is it. So go ahead and finish up your problems in Ed. And let me know if you have any other questions before we take our test tomorrow.